Hi guys, this is Matt Sloss and I'm in my shop doing a little work. Um, I teach full time, so this is my uh, part time gig is repairing and making uh, musical instrument parts. So um, some of you might recognize this saxophone that I'm I've got. This is one of my two 28M con saxophones that I have, and I have the guard off it, the plastic guard, because uh, I have to fit a bunch. I just just got done making some guards, and I got to fit them to my to my saxophone. So um, I thought in this video I would talk a little bit about this saxophone and the plastic guard uh, because for some reason I I, I get people asking in uh, spurts. So I'll go months and months without selling a, a 28M guard, and then all of a sudden I'll have to make a dozen of them. So and they didn't make that many of those saxophones. So that's um, um, pretty interesting anyways. So, uh, this is a 28M. It was made by Khan in the 1950s. It was designed by, as I understand, Santi Runyon. Uh, and, um, it's got some really interesting features. One of which is the key guard. So let me talk about that real quick. So the bell key guard, uh, which I have off right now, is plastic. And the original guard, which I have one, here we go. So this is an original plastic key guard. It's vacuum formed and it's made out of what I believe is polystyrene because polystyrene gets really brittle as it ages. Um, and then the the artwork that's on it in gold, which is the, the marching men and some leaves art deco pattern is a decal that was put on. So <clears throat> these on almost Every one I've ever seen is broken. Not almost. All the ones I've ever seen are broken. I've heard rumors from a few people that they have intact ones. And I, I try to convince them they ought to take it off. And if they're going to play it, buy one of my guards and uh, save their original. So the horns are worth a bit more if you have the original. And it's in good shape. So um, there's, a, there's one of the plastic guards that's broken. And I make a replacement guard so here's my replacement guard i got a little bit more to do on this i got to trim a little of plastic on this side off a little bit so it's vacuum formed like the original it's got the three con marching men and it's got the art deco pattern so i drew this and then uh, i i laser engraved that pattern on there so i i build these in my home shop uh it's again it's vacuum formed and a little laser engraving um, and, uh, so that's the replacement guard I make. Um, so the other thing I thought I'd talk about in this video is how unusual these saxophones are. So I, I can play saxophone. Well, I can play test the saxophone. I'm, I'm not a saxophone player. I'm a flute player. But one of the things that I like about this instrument, and maybe it's because I'm a flute player, is that... The, the key action is very light to me. It's very comfortable. It's, it's probably the most comfortable saxophone that I've, I've felt for, for playability. Um, it's, if, you, if you like a real heavy key action, this is probably not the instrument for you. But to me, I, I really like that. I like the feel. I like how it plays. And I'm not going to uh, scare you with my playing, so you're not going to hear that. Besides, I don't have neck work on this. Um, but it's, it's, it's a really nice ergonomic kind of an instrument. So some of the interesting features on this uh, instrument, and again, I missed the cork and I gotta fix the spring on the neck, but it's an underslung neck and the, the register or the octave key works from the outside pushing it down. So it's, it's, it's a little bit different take on the underslung neck and it's cut out and uh, I started making a replacement key for, for another neck I have. So um, that's the kind of stuff I do. So that's one of the interesting things. You'll also notice that um, it's got two body octave uh, vents. So you got the one on the neck and the two body octaves. So um, that's another unusual and they're keyed on the same rod. So these two close, open and close at the same time. So that's another feature that's kind of unusual. It's difficult to see on this. You can see one of them on the on the G sharp, maybe. Let me get it in here. If you look at the the bridge on the G sharp, there's a little 
adjusting screw. So the adjusting screws have a little um, um, divot radially cut into them around, and it's 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 um, uh, I wouldn't call it a knurl. It's more of a um, it's a drilled in or machined in little divot on. So you adjust the 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 adjusting screws by turning those little screws from the outside. You, there's, you don't use a screwdriver for those. Um, the other thing that's unusual about them, and again, it's, it's difficult to see on this, is that the kickers don't hit the body of the sacks. The kickers hit, hit the key posts. And so when you're, uh, when you're adjusting the keys, it's a little tight in there. You got to adjust those little screws that are hitting, hitting the post, but you can do really fine adjustments on these. Another one you'll notice as I'm, I'm holding this up is the F sharp key is, is vented on the back side of the body instead of this side. So it's, um, it's kind of interesting. It's got really nice, uh, oval pearls on all the keys. It's got an unusual table section. So, uh, and to me, it's very comfortable to play, but again, I'm a flute player, so your, your mileage may vary if you're a sax player. Uh, it's got a very nice kind of a leaf pattern that's, I would consider an art deco. And so this is, uh, as far as I know, this is an original finish on mine. And then probably the, one of the most unusual features as far as techs are involved in and um, uh, would be interested in is all the long screws, there's no pivot screws in there. They're, they, these are all long screws. So what they did was they made the screws and they, this goes all the way through here, is they necked down the screw in the middle uh, and then it's just the, it's the correct diameter for the rod on the very ends and it's smaller in the middle. So if you ever have to make one of these, if you're gonna make it like the original, um, you, you'll have some work ahead of you. So um, again, uh, just so you can see, I got done, done making a whole bunch of 28M guards that I have to finish up. Gotta put the, the gold in them and drill the holes. And uh, there you go, that's a little bit about uh, 28M alto saxophones.